Are you searching for an affordable 144Hz monitor that doesn't sacrifice picture quality? Well, the ASUS VG249Q might be what you are looking for. It's a 23.8 inch Full HD IPS display and retails for slightly less than $250 or Euros depending on your region. Let's take a closer look. In my opinion, 1080p is the perfect match for a 24-inch display, just like 27-inch monitors and 1440p. The latter gives you a slightly higher pixel density of 109 dpi, while the smaller ASUS delivers decently sharp 93 dots per inch. The clear advantage of 1080p is of course how easily high frame rates can be achieved in modern games. And the VG249Q keeps up with a refresh rate of 144Hz and also comes with adaptive sync support. Now you can get all of those features in cheaper monitors as well, but most high refresh rate monitors below 200 bucks come with either TN or VA type panels, both of which usually have their own drawbacks. As you clicked on this video, you're probably looking for an IPS type monitor, which usually is a great compromise between gaming performance, color accuracy and overall picture quality. Of course, we will take a deep look on all of those aspects in a bit. Let's first take a look at the build quality and ergonomics. The VG249Q is made of plastic, which surely isn't the most high quality plastic I've ever seen. And it is somewhat sensitive to fingerprints, though the overall build quality is sturdy and the monitor actually is quite heavy. Despite looking a bit like brushed aluminum, the bottom bezel is made of plastic. There is a DisplayPort logo on the left side of the bezel, what I find quite ironic as there is only an HDMI cable included in the box. Beneath the bottom frame, a pair of stereo speakers can be found. They sound good enough to actually be usable, despite lacking some treble clarity. The bass response is not bad compared to other integrated speakers. Don't expect a high quality audio experience, though the speakers are usable to watch some YouTube. Of course, ASUS couldn't resist to throw some red plastic applications onto the monitor. This is a tough gaming branded monitor at least, and how dare you to forget you bought a gaming monitor. Well, I personally prefer the more minimal design language of something like the Omen 27i, but let me know in the comments if you actually like red plastic applications or gaming logos on your monitor. Also red are the buttons on the bottom of the monitor that are used for menu navigation. I for one regularly misclick the off switch instead of the menu button, which drove me borderline crazy while testing all the different menu options. I much prefer joystick navigation over buttons. Luckily, the VG249Q lets you configure two shortcuts for quick access to something like the brightness setting and is also compatible to control software like Click Monitor DDC. So the OSD buttons are not a huge problem once the initial configuration is done. Now the VG249Q is not the cheapest 144Hz IPS, but it tries to make up for that with its fully adjustable stand. Height and tilt can be adjusted in a wide range, what makes it easy to find a comfortable position. Swivel can be adjusted as well and whenever your OCD kicks in, there's a little marker that helps to align the display and stand. Even the pivot can be adjusted so the monitor can be rotated 90 degrees to be used in vertical mode. This is extremely handy for multi-monitor setups and it makes the ASUS a great secondary monitor for stuff like viewing documents, coding or browsing through the web. Now let's take a closer look at the panel's performance. Literally starting with a close look at the panel, we can see the subpixel structure and the anti-reflective coating. Text is rendered clear, so everything is as it should be. Turning the brightness all the way up to 100% leads to a wide luminance of nearly 300 candelas per square meter, which is a good bit more than the 250 candelas from the spec sheet. Turning the brightness all the way down gives us 50 candelas per square meter, which is a good value for using the monitor in a darkened room. Roughly 140 candelas will be achieved at a brightness setting of 35. That's the setting I use for most measurements and calibration. The corresponding black level is 0.13 candelas per square meter, which leads to a contrast ratio of 1068 to 1. That's pretty much among the best you can expect from an IPS display without local dimming. So that's a great value and even a good amount better than the other more expensive IPS displays I've tested. The backlight uniformity of my test sample keeps up to the great black level. Make sure to watch this part at 4K as YouTube's compression otherwise messes quite heavily with these pictures. This picture captures what you can expect to see in a dimmed room with a reasonable brightness setting. Though keep in mind that the backlight uniformity can vary highly across different copies of the same monitor. And here's another 24 inch IPS monitor for some reference, though the Philips is a 75Hz monitor. 
I've also done some photos with a much longer exposure that highly exaggerates any non-uniformities. Needless to say that this is for comparison only and does not represent realistic conditions. Overall, the ASUS performs very well in this test. The same is true for the white uniformity. When showing a white picture, the average brightness deviation is just 6.67%. The biggest deviation can be found in the top left corner with the screen being roughly 12% darker than in the middle. This is below the threshold to be perceivable by the human eye and therefore a really good result. Now moving on to the color performance of the panel, I first need to comment on the different picture modes that are available in the OSD. As typical for ASUS, there are multiple inexpressively named modes available like FPS or MOBA mode. Most of them have a negative impact on the picture quality like shifting colors or brightened shadows. So you should avoid them and go for the racing mode which oddly enough is the most accurate mode. I use this for taking measurements and calibrating the monitor. Unlike of the other modes, I was very pleased of how accurate the racing mode's white point is out of the box. With a minor adjustment of the blue slider from 100 to 99, the monitor pretty much nailed the D65 white point. So these are the settings I used for the calibration and profiling. You can download the ICC profile from the link in the video description. Make sure to dial in the same settings and as always, this is not a substitute for an individual calibration and profiling. With that profile applied, the VG249Q measured an excellent average delta E of 0.14 with a maximum of 1.33. The recommended threshold are below 1 for the average and below 3 for the maximum delta E, so the ASUS can be calibrated very accurately. The important sRGB color space is pretty much completely covered while the coverage of Adobe RGB and DCI-P3 is below 80%. The overall gamut volume covers an area 12% bigger than the sRGB color space, so this isn't exactly a wide gamut monitor. Though this isn't much of a drawback if you're not a professional that needs to work in those bigger color gamuts. For everyone else, the smaller gamut can actually be positive, as this reduces the oversaturation problem in non-color managed applications that is common to wide gamut monitors. To further reduce the risk of oversaturation, the ASUS also features an sRGB mode. Tested against the sRGB color space, the color accuracy is not good at all. Also, the white point is pretty far off which is particularly bad as activating the sRGB mode disables the color balance control options in the OSD. This also applies to the brightness control which is fixed at 171 candelas per square meter in this mode. As if this wasn't bad enough, the sRGB mode drastically decreases the contrast ratio. So the sRGB mode really should be avoided, especially as the monitor has no significant oversaturation problem in the racing mode. Despite not having an extremely wide color gamut, I noticed a faint bit of bending when looking at artificial gradients. This isn't a problem for most natural gradients in photos or videos and therefore shouldn't really be a drawback for most users. However, this is not the kind of quality you would want for professional photo or video editing. But if that's what you're into, you certainly would look for a different tier of monitor anyway. Due to the slight bending, I suspect the VG249Q uses a 6-bit plus FLC panel, but I couldn't find any reliable confirmation about that. Nevertheless, the panel certainly gets close to real 8-bit performance. Now, color performance is one thing, but let's take a look at the VG249Q's gaming capabilities. A refresh rate of 144Hz is pretty much the standard these days for anything that wants to be called gaming monitor. And the ASUS does not disappoint. It also packs adaptive sync support, namely FreeSync or G-Sync. If you're an owner of an Nvidia graphics card, you will need to get a DisplayPort cable separately to use G-Sync, as this does not work over the HDMI 1.4 input the monitor provides. AMD users get FreeSync support over both the HDMI and DisplayPort connection. The monitor also is FreeSync Premium compatible. Nvidia on the other hand did not validate the ASUS as G-Sync compatible, so you have to manually enable G-Sync in the Nvidia control panel. In my testing, G-Sync worked perfectly fine with the VG249Q. Now a high refresh rate monitor also needs to achieve good response times to deliver a crisp gaming experience without disturbing with ghosting artifacts. As usual, I've used Blurbuster's Pursuit camera technique to capture the motion characteristics of the monitor. The VG249Q sports two so-called ELMB modes, what stands for Extreme Low Motion Blur. Sounds good, so let's give them a try. 
Setting ELMB from off to standard obviously does a great job eliminating motion blur. The little alien is far less blurry with ELMB activated than without, though ghosting is still a problem as the UFO trails multiple ghost images. Sadly, the overdrive setting is not available with ELMB so there's no way to reduce the ghosting in this mode. Adaptive Sync is not available either and the brightness setting is fixed at a value equivalent to a brightness setting of 45. Engaging the turbo mode caps the brightness even further while delivering a marginally sharper image. Due to the mentioned drawbacks, I wouldn't recommend any ELMB setting. But the VG249Q provides multiple overdrive settings, which are called trace-free. The OSD offers a slider from 0 to 100 with increments of 20. I skip a few settings as there is no drawback turning this all the way up to 100. I have to admit that I am a bit surprised that ASUS didn't choose to include a setting with massively tuned up overdrive. This is usually done to advertise terrific response times at the cost of unusably bad image quality thanks to loads of inverse ghosting. But ASUS obviously went a different route and included a notably well-tuned overdrive setting as you can see in the picture to the right. How good this performance really is becomes obvious when we compare this to the HP Omen 27i that uses LG's fast IPS panel which built up a reputation for its outstanding ghosting performance. And honestly, the VG249Q is not far off. And keep in mind that the monitors that come with that LG panel are much more expensive than the ASUS. Let's quickly confirm that the same trace free setting can be used at 120Hz which is important when using Adaptive Sync. That is, as the refresh rate will always be a bit below 144Hz with proper configured free OG Sync. As the refresh rate decreases, there's obviously slightly more motion blur, but the ghosting is still well controlled at 120Hz with maximum overdrive. However, if you are a console gamer and doomed to play at 60Hz, it's best to set trace free to 80. At 100% there's noticeable inverse ghosting, so better avoid that. On that note, I'm sure some are interested in using the VG249Q with an Xbox or Playstation. And this is no doubt a great monitor for console gaming. But don't expect to utilize more than 60Hz with the current console generation. Especially as the ASUS only provides an HDMI 1.4 input apart from its display port connection while the HDMI 1.4 port can be utilized up to 144Hz on PC, it's often reported that the Xbox One X demands at least an HDMI 2.0 connection for 120Hz gaming. It's still unclear how this will turn out with the next-gen consoles. So while this monitor delivers a great 60Hz gaming performance, I would only recommend buying this for a console if you plan to upgrade to PC soon. PC gaming is a joy on the VG249Q. The motion performance is nearly as good as with the best IPS monitors currently on the market, which are quite a bit more expensive than the ASUS. This is good news if ghosting is something you are sensitive to. It also packs all the other important bits like a 144Hz refresh rate as well as FreeSync and G-Sync support. The overall picture quality is terrific considering the monitor's price. The color accuracy is spot on after calibration and profiling. The contrast ratio is top notch for an IPS display that has no local dimming. While the color gamut isn't particularly wide, it completely covers the important sRGB color space. If you're working with color sensitive content for a living, this monitor will obviously not be the right choice for you. This is backed up by some faint bending that can be observed with artificial gradients. But if you're primarily gaming or intending a mixed usage including some content consumption or even some ambitious photo or video editing, then the VG249Q delivers a compelling package with great performance and ergonomics. Now there are cheaper high refresh rate options with a similar feature set minus the ergonomics. I especially have the ASUS VP249QGR in mind here that is suspected to even sport the same panel. I will try to get my hands on this, so make sure to subscribe.